Hello. Uh, we are going to discuss how to implant a CSF shunt in a neonate and an infant, and how to try to avoid complications. Uh, as you know, the um, hydrocephalus is a pathology of the very young, uh, especially as a neonate. And in our series, the median age was three months. So it's really a, a, a pathology of the neonate and the small infant. The aim is a durable diversion of excess CSF. When we implant a shunt, we have to expect that it is for life. And uh, endoscopy is rarely a first line option in the very young because uh, the conditions are not good. The cause of the hydrocephalus is uh, mostly um, extraventricular and uh, the, the healing uh, properties of the baby um, makes that uh, the stomach does not remain patent. Here we have an example of a baby who had a, um, a ETV, and you see that the, it, it is working beautifully as a ventricular subgaleal shunt. Um, so shunting is a by default uh, indication, and uh, we know that the uh, ETV, when it's possible, is interesting, but we have a, a, a very uh, bad uh, outcome in, uh, when we do an ETV under the age of 12 months. Uh, so, uh, the VP shunt, we have to choose first which material we have to use. Uh, we know that there is a risk of uh, revision which is high uh, during uh, the childhood and later life. So, we have to avoid using latex gloves because if we do, the patient may become allergic to, to latex and uh, have to have severe reactions uh, later in life. Then we have to uh, define which uh, CSF access we choose. And generally, we use a ventricular catheter with a reservoir. We have to anticipate growth. That means we, it's better to use a striped catheter because it gives uh, much less reaction uh, to the immune system. Uh, you see on the left, um, um, barium impregnated catheter, which is uh, uh, laden with uh, uh, scar tissue and uh, adherences to the skin. It's much better to use a striped catheter. Then we have to use a valve which mechanism is robust. So that means it's better to use a boiling cone in the very young. Uh, we like to use a flow controlled uh, valve in a term infants because it has a it is a very versatile valve which can be still be very efficient during adult life. So our choice used to be uh, between an OSV2 valve and an Atlas valve. However, the uh, Atlas valve has been phased out of the catalog of uh, Integra. So we have to uh, find another solution. Then we have to prepare the skin. We, it's better to avoid shaving because it uh, creates uh, skin lesions, which are, can be the cause of infection. We use povidone, which has a high iodine content without alcohol. It is a visible dye, so we know where we have put the, when we sterilize the skin. And uh, uh, there is a question of the risk of thyroid depression which is a theoretical, has been published in burns, in cardiac surgeries, there have been several publications. However, uh, the, uh, the actual risk of uh, hypothyroidism in these patients is theoretical, while the risk of uh, infection when we use, uh, when we don't uh, sterilize well the skin is high. And we know that infection is very um, deleterious for the um, development of the child. So uh, then we have to install the patient in the operating room. The imperatives are to be obsessive with asepsia. We have to keep, so we have to, um, to be careful about the timing, the air flux, the skin preparation. We shall emphasize this uh, a bit later. We have to, to keep the child warm. We have to use an overhead heating, which is better than hot air because hot air can create a flux of air which can uh, spread um, dust and uh, um, creates a problem about asepsia. Then we have to access to the, to the ventricle with a head turn. The, we have to organize a tunnelization, which um, is best prepared when the, the shoulder is lifted on the shunted side. And we have to clear the abdomen, and we have to take care of the iPad. This is a baby with a with a, a Cruzon syndrome. He, he had exophthalmos, 
he needed an uh, uh, iPad and he also had a, um, a gastrostomy, uh, a colostomy, excuse me. Then he, we have to take care of the tube because if we remove the tube while removing the drapes after at the end of surgery, the anesthetist will be very, uh, very upset. We have to be, uh, we have to take care of the IV line, of course. The, uh, the temperature probe, because if it comes out of the anus of the baby, it, it will um, soil the, the operative site. Then we have the, the gelatin, the monopola, the vacuum uh, mattress, and hot hair in this case. Um, we have to take care of everything and clear the way for our shunt. Uh, so the, uh, the access to the abdomen must be clear. Then we have to respect uh, the airways. So during draping, we have to put we put some compressing uh, before applying the adhesive drapes because when we remove the drapes, we have not to remove the tube, the, the IV line, and so on. And uh, we have to uh, allow some access for the anesthetist. He has when he has to um, to put a stethoscope on the um, on the on the child's thorax, for example. Um, so we have to share the space. Then the incision. We have to be careful to do a right angle incision uh, because if we don't, uh, the skin will, when during closure, the dermis will be exposed, which, which can be a cause of infection. The incision is better uh, accurate. We, to, we do a, 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 we cover the skin flap to um, with a, a a gauze which is impregnated with betadine to uh, to avoid uh, contact with the, um, uh, the hair follicles which are not uh, disinfected by the surface um, disinfection. We use providon on skin incision. We cover the the, um, the skin co uh, cuts with gauze impregnated with providon. Then we have to insert the ventricular catheter. It is very important to have a very uh, um, uh, re reliable landmarks. So the entry point, we use an, uh, a double obliquity uh, with the catheter placed in the atrium in uh, um, an anterior and internal uh, and superior uh, double obliquity. We do a burr hole, which is very narrow. Uh, we do a burr hole generally with a regime in, very, uh, in small babies. It, the, the place is regularly on the, on the site of the lambdoid suture. So we don't need a, 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 a motor or a, a, burr, a burr, we just use a regime. We do a very narrow uh, dual hole because uh, to avoid uh, CSF from uh, leaking around the catheter. We penetrate the atrium at 45, 45 degrees. We, we aim at the uh, bregma and we put a landmark on the floor. We, uh, this is um, the point of entry, which is midline between the, um, the external ear canal and the, uh, uh, and the inion. And uh, uh, the burr hole is uh, just a little bit above this line. Uh, and we aim at a landmark we put on the floor, just a piece of tape on the floor before draping. So we can have, uh, we can aim very well uh, b before the, um, the drape as output. And when we penetrate the ventricle, we feel the uh, penetration of the ependymal layer by the catheter. It can go wrong. Here you have a, a gallery of all the possible uh, failures of, uh, of uh, placement of the catheter. Uh, which can be, uh, uh, there is a, a huge variety as you can see. So we can ask whether navigation can be an indication. In many uh, institutions, in, uh, navigation is systematic. Uh, we think it's not necessary in most cases because the ventricles are large. And when you have good landmarks, when you have a good training, you, uh, th there is a very low risk of, uh, of the catheter going wrong. Um, and when you use, uh, we, and we consider that the navigation uh, lengthens the procedures, it complicates the surgery, it increases the risk of infection, and uh, and it does not uh, prevent uh, complications like these two patients. These two patients, uh, these two patients had a, a catheter put under navigation. It can work, but it's not the, uh, exactly what was aimed. So um, even with navigation, is it, it can be complicated. Um, tunnelization, uh, we do a tunnelization from top down, 
pre-sternal, it's important to be midline to avoid uh, passing behind the, uh, the clavicle, as, as you can see on the right. Uh, it's important to keep on the right pass, and you have to feel the position of the tip of your tunnelizer to avoid straying behind the clavicles or between the ribs, as you can see uh, here on the lower right, the catheter is inside the thorax, outside the, um, uh, the fascia, hopefully, but it can be a complication. And also, the, the, if, if, if you have a, a wound of the jugular vein, the catheter can be aspirated inside the heart. So, uh, so the tip, our tip to, um, when you try, when you tunnelize towards the navel, you can shift the abdominal wall uh, to place the right uh, target just in front of the tip of your tunnelizer. It can be difficult to navigate the tunnelizer. It can be easier to shift the abdominal wall because the child is uh, sleeping, the, the, the vessels are, are slack. Uh, and this way you can uh, tunnel uh, your way uh, down to the navel. Uh, it's important to fixate this, the valve to the skull. Uh, the pericranium can be very fragile in, new, in newborn, so it can be interesting to, to um, to fixate to the bone itself. You can go through the bone with just the needle of your, of your thread and you do a uh, figure of eight fixation to uh, avoid uh, a, a knot uh, which is too tight on the bone because it can necrose, it can, uh, it can uh, if it necroses, uh, the fixation will not uh, hold. Then you have to access the peritoneum. Um, there is a saying is that, is that if you are not 100% sure you're in, you're almost 100% sure you're out. So it's important to, to, to do it under uh, vision control. We avoid the portnoy uh, troca. I, I think the indication is uh, the desbin. Uh, you go through the umbilic uh, when it is healed. That is, uh, that means if you have to operate on a very young ne neonate, you may uh, need to be paraumbilical. Uh, if there is a hernia, it can be a problem. Uh, so you may need the help of a visceral surgeon. And um, when you have access to the, uh, the peritoneum, you can put the length of catheter you want, and there is no limit to the length of the catheter, which is the beauty of the uh, ventricular peritoneal valve compared to, with the atrial valve. And um, the, the catheter should not be shortened because you have to put a length enough for the full growth. And if you short, shorten too much the, the catheter, you modify the properties of your shunt and you decrease its resistance. Skin closure should be, should be meticulous. Uh, we use inverted knot on the, on, on the uh, facial plane and um, you, we use uh, rapid um, uh, resorption film uh, thread to uh, avoid to have uh, threads trespassing through the skin like here on the left which can be the cause of infection. We use rapid, we use um, uh, triangular, uh, uh, we, we, don't, we don't use uh, triangular uh, needles in newborn, uh, newborn because it can be the cause of CSF uh, leak. It, it causes, uh, we avoid uh, um, uh, braided uh, film uh, threads in uh, newborns because it can cause a uh, mesh effect. We prefer to use a tapered needle and um, rather than a triangular needle. And this is the kind of suture we do in uh, newborns. We put a sterile dressing, uh, which, is, um, uh, which is changed every second day until the suture is removed or sheds. This is a baby with a ventricular subgallial shunt. You can see that this is very efficient. The prevention of infection is a very important in these babies, which are very fragile. There are many causes of infection, so we have to be uh, very um, assertive and uh, paranoid regarding the prevention of infection. So it's really a task for mad dogs. I explain you why. T is for timing. The uh, operation should be first in line. That means we have to start the big surgery later. Air circulation is important. We have to, uh, you, to close the doors. To, uh, everybody should wear a mask. There should be 
we should be uh, in a flux with a good direction or preferably with a overhead heater than uh, compared with a, a warming uh, blanket. Skin preparation is very important. We use uh, uh, iodine, no shaving. Four is for four persons in the room. That means the surgeon, scrub nurse, circulating nurse, anesthetist, as few tourists as possible. Manipulation should be reduced to minimum. Minimal um, uh, manipulation, does it mean no touch? We're, we don't see how we can do a no touch without damaging the catheter, so we don't do it. But we use, I think uh, double gloving is very important. A for antibiotics, we use it intravenously at the time of incision, and we also soak the implants in a, a serum with antibiotics. D for duration, the shorter the operation, the better it is. We have to keep things simple. D for dressing, we, it, it's important to be a control freak, especially if the child is in, is in intensive care because in, many of our visceral colleagues do not put a dressing and um, it, we have to be paranoid about the uh, dressing of uh, shunted patients. O is for obsessing about germs from the skin, but to do a meticulous incision and closure, as I said, to cover skin cuts and avoid contact between the skin and the, and the shunt, and um, be, be aware that uh, the infections are caused by the germs from your skin and the patient's skin. We have to interact with the anesthetist before and during and after surgery for respiratory concerns, the intubation, the positioning, when we uh, rotate the head there may be uh, some uh, kinking of the tube or the, 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 tube, the intubation can become selective. Um, we have to discuss if the child can be operate, extubated after the surgery, especially the premature, they, have, they may need to be ventilated one day or more after surgery. Uh, temperature is important uh, to be aware of. We, uh, we know that the body temperature drops when the child is exposed, especially if he, if he is wet with betadine. We have to discuss about the antibiotics, which is, are very important, as I said. Uh, also, when we open the shunt, we know that the ventricular volume will, will drop very fast and it can have uh, it can be the cause of a circulatory collapse because the brain expands by vasodilatation. It creates a third sector. And also we have to discuss about pain during tunnelization and after surgery. So these are the different interactions we have to, with the uh, anesthetist, like the tetrax and the Roman tetrax, which are uh, displayed in Venice. So in conclusion, we have uh, two obsessions, that it works, that it does not get infected, we have to, uh, to, to remind ourselves that simple is beautiful, but that God is in the details. So it's very important to become a shunt expert. And as Niels Bohr said, an expert is a person who has made all the mistakes that can be made in a very narrow field. And as you may know, uh, Niels Bohr, which was a Dane, was also one of the fathers of the atomic bomb. I thank you for your attention. <laughs>